to find things that leave you feeling a little bit less, a little bit less isolated um, in your particular context. But I think that that is really important because for me, um, I have never quite found the same type of community that I had in graduate school, which I think is something that a lot of people experience. And it isn't necessarily because you're not supported wherever it is you are going. Um, I feel very well supported in my job here, uh, but you're entering kind of a new intellectual context that is different than the one that you're used to. So if you come from a school where you're working with an advisor who has a lot of graduate students, which was the case with me, you're, you're surrounded by a lot of people who think relatively similar to the way that you think and who are trained pretty similarly to the way that you're trained. And once you kind of step outside of that, sometimes it doesn't matter how nice people are or how well-intentioned they are, it's just, it's different and that can be really unsettling. Um, so for me, you know, it, it, it was as simple as moving into a history department coming from an art history background, which I really didn't think would be a shift at all. I didn't even think about it as a shift. And then um, one of the first things that I did when I got hired was give uh, some type of guest lecture for a pedagogical workshop. And I was the only woman in a room of like 25 men. And that just actually really surprised me because I was so not used to it. Um, so I think that um, if nothing else, it's kind of validating to know that women from across various disciplines and various points in their career are kind of experiencing some of these same things. Um, but to leave you, I guess, with a couple of moments of positivity and hope, because I don't want to use up the whole hour and a half, I hope we can actually have a bit of a discussion if people are inclined to do so. Um, I, I still think that um, writing my dissertation was the biggest accomplishment of my professional life and possibly personal life, I'm not sure. Um, because it's still the hardest thing that I've ever had to do, was to conceptualize and think about a, a project that large. And someone once said to me, you won't ever have to do anything as hard professionally as writing that thesis. And I have to agree with that, even though I'm now working towards turning it into a book, and that has its own set of challenges, nothing has ever been that bad again. <laughs> and working on that project is a thousand times more enjoyable when um, some of the requirements and pressures of grad school are removed from around you. Um, the other thing is that the writer's block that kind of haunted me the year after my dissertation, I've learned that that's not the end of the world and that, you know, we all have moments where we're not as productive as we want to be and where our goals and expectations of ourselves don't actually match what we're able to produce. And sometimes I think we just need to be a bit gentle with ourselves and not be so hard. Um, and I think often, you know, if this was a friend of mine, why would I be telling her? And it wouldn't be to say, you just need to glue yourself to the chair and start writing. Um, so, you know, difficult moments do come, but I think that, again, you know, looking for sort of things like books, in my case, can kind of help you negotiate those moments. Um, and then I guess the third thing that I just want to sort of conclude with is that most people that I've encountered in my professional life have been generous. And so, starting my job, I feel pretty lucky to have been embraced by a department that gets along very well and in a context where I feel like if I have to move across town, I can call somebody to help me lift a couch. And I think that that's more often the case than not. And most people are kind and most people, um, you know, want to sort of help you out. And even if you think, you know, like ideologically or intellectually, you're not going to get along with somebody, that's not always the case. And sometimes you sort of find friends and allies um, in places that you would least expect it. So that's kind of my positive spin to conclude, but I just want to thank everybody for listening to me, uh, kind of indulge a little bit about my work and my own experience, and if you have questions, or if you want to just have a more casual discussion, I'd be happy to engage with that. Yeah? I had a couple of questions. Sure. Um, one was, what about the pressure now to publish or perish? Mm -hmm. you, what are you doing about that? You've actually got seven years or something. Yeah. Now, right? yeah, no, that's, that's a good question. It is a reality. Um, I think that, I mean, the, the truth is, is that yes, of course, you have to publish and you have to go to conferences and you have to do um, a certain amount of professional activity to survive, to get tenure. If you're somebody who you think you might, once you've gotten a job, maybe you want to move around, it's really important to kind of stay active in your field for a number of reasons. Uh, so I am somebody who is, you know, despite me talking about writer's block and things that haven't gone so well, I am very dedicated to publishing in my field. Um, to me, what I have tried to do this year, because this year has been a more successful version than my first year of teaching, I've tried to sort of carve out 
a little bit of time even when I'm at my busiest, um, which again is sort of a strange thing. So for example, in the fall semester, I was teaching three courses and I was applying for a major shirt grant, which was, you know, that was a lot. That was a lot on my plate. And um, I was feeling stressed because I thought, oh, as soon as the semester's over, I'm teaching less and I don't have this grant, I'm gonna have to work on my book. So I was almost building that up as an impossible task, particularly because the year before I'd had such a hard time writing because I think I was still just adjusting to, to work. And a colleague in my department um, who got hired at the same time as me, she said that you know she had participated in this women's writing group when she had been at a previous university. Why don't we start it here? And why don't you give the inaugural paper? And I thought at the time, oh yeah, this is a great idea. And then a week later I thought, I've made a huge error because now I have to actually work on something to distribute to some colleagues you know, who I'm working with. I don't want them to think that I'm completely incompetent, so it's got to be at a certain level. Um, but it actually was one of the best things that uh, you know, could have happened to me in that moment because it forced me to start working on something about two months before I, in my head, I had scheduled myself to start working on that project. And also, um, I got some really good feedback and people were much more receptive and generous to the project than I was being myself. I was building it up, once again, I think as we all do, as something that needed a lot of revision and a lot of work to kind of get it up to speed. So this was the introduction um, of my monograph. And, you know, a couple of the people who read it had published a couple of books and they had some really good advice. Um, so for me, that's been um, one strategy that, I mean, I can't take credit for it because it was my colleague's idea, but participating in that group um, has helped a lot. And it's helped me to actually stay on track with my writing this year because there's sort of internal goals where you have to kind of deliver something. So th that's, that's helped me to think about publishing as more of a collaborative experience than as one that's sort of isolated where you're sitting alone in your room because all writing actually is collaborative. If you're sending out a journal article, people are commenting on it and they're sending it back and you're, you're never really actually writing anything in isolation even though it often feels that way. <laughs> Does that answer your question? It sort of, yeah, it obviously brings up more questions and yeah. comments. The first thing, of course, I just realized and you're not alone in that. The first year of teaching, you have to do an awful lot of preparation mm -hmm. of lectures, which you haven't had to do before, or you can't really use them over. So, yep. so that's a testing ground for you there. Yes, it absolutely is. And actually, in some ways, um, even though I used to think of teaching and research as two very separate entities, and they're not. They're actually pretty interrelated. So some of the work that you um, are doing on your own research can be applied pretty easily to the classroom and vice versa actually. I mean sometimes some of the teaching I've done, is particularly with new courses that I taught in the first year, um, have helped me to kind of think about some publishing projects a little bit differently which has been good because teaching, especially kind of upper year courses, I was reading really regularly new things in the field that um, I hadn't probably done that since before I started writing my thesis. You know we were reading kind of a big chunk of material every single week to just kind of prep your classes and sort of keep, try and be somewhat up to date <laughs> with your scholarship. Yeah? Um, I know you touched a little bit up on this, but I was hoping that you could maybe talk about your, um, this was emotional and psychological experiences of crossing the Great Divide. Sure. <laughs> um, because um, I'm, I'm sort of in the midst of crossing mm -hmm. the Divide and I'm finding that, that that is really a, a major thing in my life right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So yeah, I'd just like to hear about your experience. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, I'll just, I'll just tell you boarding on too much information. Um, I, moved, I moved to Fredericton from Kingston, so I'd been at Queen's University, as I said, in an art department. I'd been there for six years, so I'd really set up a community of friends, um, both students and kind of faculty members who are working at Queen's. When I moved to Fredericton, I moved here with my partner, which was a bonus because at least I had one person who kind of had to talk to me and put up with me most of the time. Um, but we found it pretty lonely, even though people in my department were inviting me over for dinner, even though people were, were very, very, very nice. Like I really did walk into a pretty open and friendly environment, but I had a lot of nerves about that because going over to dinner to somebody's house who I was going to be working with, you know, it really felt like work at certain points, um, to be quite honest, because you're, you're so nervous that you're going to say something or that you're going to, you know, put yourself in a position. Um, it, it just felt very formal, I guess is what I'm trying to say, even though I'm sure that was in no way the intention of the people who were inviting me over. So 
I found um, I found that the first year was really the hardest because I was trying to figure out my social circle. I was trying to figure out, do I want to spend all of my time with people that I'm working with, or do I want to try and find people outside of the workplace who could be friends? Do I want to meet people at the gym? Do I want to meet people at the grocery store? Which might sound really strange, um, but that ended up being pretty important is to try and try and find friends outside of work because when you when I first started working anyway, I don't want to speak for everybody, you're working all the time. So you don't really have a lot of time, or I didn't, to do anything else. I mean, I stopped exercising, I stopped cooking, I stopped doing all of the things that I really was pretty good at doing in graduate school, which was not the best move, but it, it was sort of a survival strategy, I think, at the time. Um, so to kind of quell that loneliness, I went to probably a few more conferences for one thing that I probably should have in my first year because I wanted to sort of reconnect with people who were in my field first of all but also you know friends that I was sort of used to spending a lot of time with so that became an important strategy and also I ended up meeting it only took two people uh, I met two people who weren't working at the university and I ended up spending a lot of time with them socially talking about things like pets and you know things that had nothing to do with my book and that was also pretty important because it, it gave me a context outside of my working life um, which is not something that I'm very good at because it tends to be sort of all-encompassing for me but it was one important thing that I tried to force myself a little bit to do. <laughs>